Hello and welcome back to Chengi's World. My name is Chengi and you, my precious one, are my world. So welcome to Chengi's World. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share and hit the notification bell. And for those of you who are coming back, thank you so much. I love you tons and tons and tons. Today is Soul Saturday and we are talking about stepping into grace. Okay, so last Saturday we spoke about uh, fighting for your victory, going for it, allowing yourself to push in and press into God to get that thing that you want. But along the way, what happens when we begin to take our stand is that the realms of the spirit also take their stand. And there is almost an announcement of war. And, and there's an announcement, it's like a trumpet call of, okay, Changi's up and she ain't playing. Okay, so what ends up happening is there is a, there's a rising up of, 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 of opposition to, to your stand. And what will happen and, and what begins to happen is we have who is called the accuser of the brethren. There is um, a court in heaven and, and there is a place where the enemy goes before God and we see it in the book of Job. And, and, and he says, I was wandering to and fro on the earth and, and they begin to discuss um, who and what. So we realize that God sometimes often has an audience with the enemy. And at that point, the enemy will go and say, look, They've done this. They're the accuser of the brethren. They've, Chengi's misbehaved. Chengi's done something. Therefore, I will stand on that mistake and create um, a, a, and steal her blessing. Or I will stand on, on, I will use that as an opportunity, as a doorway to, to enter into her life and, and postpone or delay. Okay. And the reason and the way that he can do that and, and only have power to do that is when you accept that based on your doctrines and your understanding of God's word. So what begins to happen is when we begin to rise up and pray, the voices begin to come into our head. You are not worthy. You are not worthy of this. Remember what you did last week. Remember what you did last month. Remember what you said to him. Remember what you stole, remember your lifestyle, remember the habits that you have, remember that you are still working on this addiction and you still haven't overcome it, how can you want God to do this for you, remember, 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 and, and so what the enemy does is he barrages our mind with a feeling of unworthiness and undeservingness and, 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 and the fact that until you overcome this obstacle, until you overcome this weakness, you will never receive the promises of God. And then of course there are preachers that will um, stand up and say those things, you know, and until you do A, B, C, D, and G until you are a good person and you're 100% good and you're walking in holiness and you're walking in, in perfection, um, you know, you will not receive the goodness and, and, and the favor and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the power of God. But, uh, you know, um, and so God... It, it all becomes transactional in that I have to be a really good girl, make no mistakes for uh, until God comes. But we know that we are in this world and, and that God has made provision for the fact that we are in this flesh. And this flesh is saved, being saved to be saved is a process of salvation. And, and so if God was to wait for you to be perfect before he blesses you, then you would never, ever be blessed. If God was waiting for you to overcome that problem, that addiction, that issue that situation for him to bless you and to open a door for you and to feed you and to promote you then you would never be promoted you would never be great and one of the things that God shows us in his word from Old Testament all the way to the new is the fact that he blessed Abraham despite his mistake with producing Ishmael he blessed David despite his mistake with Bathsheba he blessed all of his children all along the way despite their mistakes despite Moses's um, mistakes he blessed anyway Be despite the the children of Israel's mistake he blessed anyway why because there was such a thing called the blood and the blood was consistently and constantly speaking on their behalf because they would come before God and they would offer a sacrifice of acknowledgement what God wants from you and I is an acknowledgement that we have missed the way that we've missed the mark and that we are wanting him to purify us and make us holy and cleanse us but he wants that not because he is deciding whether to bless you or not bless you because of what you said to him um, you know you your husband left you and you deserve it because you said this to him and you did this to him and whatever and now you're asking God for reconciliation or you're asking God to 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 bring to you that which are a blessing um to you you're asking God to give you a promotion even though in your last job you were caught stealing um or whatever um it might be that big or it might not be that big whatever the situation is you 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 struggle 
you know, with fornication. And, and, and so now you feel as though, you know, you are not worthy of marriage anymore. Uh, not unless you stop or whatever the story is, whatever your battle is, you, you are now being told by the enemy that you are not deserving. You are not deserving of the goodness and the mercy and the favor of God. And I just want to say to you, the only way that you can overcome is to step into grace. That is unmerited favor. That is the space where God lives and reigns. Look, God wants us to walk right, to be right, not so that we can earn the blessings or the love of God. Because we know that God loves the sinner and the, and the believer the same way, exactly the same. God's love for one who has come to believe is not greater than one who has not. He was so great, his love was, that he sent his begotten son when we were all yet in sin. When every single last one of us was a mess, he loved us enough to make the sacrifice, to make the blessing possible. God's love and his provision and his goodness and his ability to open doors and to make things possible is not based on you. You can never earn it it's based on the blood but to walk in holiness and in righteousness is not so that God can feel more like God God is God whether you do it or not it is for your own good it is for your own wholeness it is for your own sanity there is always a reason bigger and more centered around you when God says this is not good when God and often we get into legalism and we get into this exchange transactional thing with God and often we find ourselves waiting for our blessing even longer because we're trying to fix what's broken and not believing in a God who loves us in his wholeness in his fullness that God wants you to be happy and God has made provision for it despite you you will always have a place in God's heart and he is never going to delay your blessing because of something you did. God is never going to delay your blessing. The enemy might take advantage of it and might use that to sear your conscience or to give you a conscience so that in so doing your prayers are not fervent and effectual. You are, you are walking in guilt. Your head is bowed. So you are not willing to get up and pray and press through and trust God because you feel unworthy. And it is that ability to get up and say, Lord, I am a mess, but I am your child and I love you. And tomorrow I'm probably going to wake up and make another mistake. But Lord, have mercy on me and show me your compassion and show me your love and deliver me from this thing that has a hold on me. But do not withhold your goodness and your blessing from me. Do not withhold your kindness from me. Because if you do not bless me, what will I do? If you do not bless me, where will I go? If you do not bless me, well, what will the world say? You know, if you don't bless me, Lord, I cannot live the life because your blessings make me rich. Your blessings are what cause me to be different from those in the world. Your blessings are the ones that show that there is a living and good God who loves us despite ourselves. Lord, this is my prayer. This is my supplication. But you won't pray that prayer because guilt will have you bowing your head. Guilt will have you sitting down and counting your sin. Guilt will have you bound in chains and your feet and your heart and your mouth is now enslaved because you're walking in guilt because you are under a legalistic system. You are under a pharisaical system. A system that says, live right or God will not bless you. Be right or God will not love you. A transactional system. You will not go to heaven. You will not inherit the earth. Look, let me tell you something, people. Let me tell you something, people of God. I was in ministry and I ministered and I was around. It doesn't matter how big the pastor is, what title they have and how many thousands they have in their church. All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And each and every single one of us has something that we're working with God on. And that will never end. Never, ever, ever. When you think you have overcome a part of yourself, God brings his mirror before you and says, yeah, but you're still struggling with that though. Can we work on that? Okay, so I don't sleep around anymore. I'm now a celibate holy girl. Yeah, but we've got greed envy we got jealousy there is always something there is always a thorn in our flesh there's always that thing that we're not getting right so sometimes that's why the bible says and paul says be careful lest you think you stand be careful lest you think you stand because you're at your most vulnerable the moment a believer and a christian can stand there and say i am perfect i am righteous i've ticked every box everything is fine boy oh boy 
you are in a lot of trouble, okay? You are in a lot of trouble. And the day that you stand in that position, then you begin to feel that you can preach those doctrines. But let me just point something out at you. You're probably suffering from self-righteousness. Because it is a journey. Some of our issues are visible. Some are not visible. What is eating away at us sometimes can be seen by everybody. And so everybody can point at it and you feel more convicted by it. But what are the things that nobody can see that are eating away at you? Because those things will still stop and stand against the grace of God. The grace of God, the grace and the beauty of who God is, is if we ask, we shall receive. If we knock, the door shall be open. If we, if we, if, if, if we seek his face, we will find him. The grace and the glory of God is that whatever we want, whatever we need, let us bring it before him in petition. Do not allow in this season, and I know that I'm speaking to somebody somewhere, in this season of rising up, in this season of pursuing that promise that God has made you. When God made you a promise, he made it in grace. He made it knowing that you are not fit, you are not worthy. He made it knowing that you would make mistakes along the way. But he made it because he wants us constantly to understand and live his grace. I am not talking about whether people will go to heaven or hell. I'm not going to get into the theology of uh, sin will not allow you. We all know that God wants us to live holy and righteous lives. But we, some of us understand that it is a journey. You know, wake up and be perfect. It is a journey that we are taking. And the more we give each other grace to take it and love to take it, the more we will begin to understand the grace and the love of God. But I will tell you this without conviction, without any doubt or any fear. God is not looking for you to be perfect, to have got it right, to be getting it right for him to bless you. God wants to bless you in spite and despite of you. God wants to bless you in such a way that you will sit back and say, I could have never earned. I could have never done this. I could have never received this. I could have never in my own strength got it. Oh, wretched man that I am who will deliver me from the body of this flesh. I am wretched, but God in his kindness and his mercy delivered me. God in his kindness and mercy fulfilled his promise towards me. God in his kindness and mercy delivered me out of the bondage that I was in. I am not encouraging Christians to go off and sin. I am encouraging us to realize that there is, there is power. There is the blood to cleanse us of all unrighteousness and to lead us and put us on a path. There is a journey that we need to take, but that journey does not disqualify you from the goodness of God to fulfill his promise to you before 2018 ends. It doesn't disqualify you from God fulfilling his promise in the time and in the season that he said he will do. It is never about you. It is about God's character and his willingness to stand on his word and to show himself faithful and strong. Because let me tell you something, love never fails and God knows that more than anyone will ever know it. Because when the prodigal son came back, and he deserved to be treated like a servant. And his father met him with love and crowned him and put a ring on him. The father will never not have a more worthy son in his home. That boy came back and will serve and has served in a way that would never have ever happened had he not lost his way. If the prostitute who God did not that Jesus didn't push out of the room, but blessed her anyway. The prostitute that God blessed anyway, loved anyway, embraced anyway. The woman on the, on the well who he, he gave himself freely to. I will give you water. I will give you. He didn't even say when you repent, I'll give you water. He didn't say if you turn away from your ways, I will give you water. He said just ask of me and I will give you the waters of life. Ask of me and I will fill your cup. And when... She saw that love and she responded to that love. She didn't want that lifestyle anymore. Sometimes we don't want to give up those things that God has for us because, you know, we don't know what else can take its place. We don't want to give up that addiction. We don't want to give up that behavior because we're not yet assured of God's love. But when God shows us his love in spite of and despite of us, then we, 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 we just serve him better. We're willing to let go of these things. And God loved us first before we were even, we could even love him back. He loved us first. He loved us first. And in response to that love, we put aside and we put away our old ways. First of all, we have to understand 
that God loves you so much that he wants to bless you with that husband, that child you've been praying for. He wants to bless your finances. He wants to give you a home. He wants to give you a promotion. He wants to prosper your business. He wants to do all of these things first. He wants to show you his goodness and his kindness. And he says, ask of me, ask of me, and I will give it to you. Ask of me. Don't come before me with a guilty heart, with a burdened heart, but I made a mistake and I messed up and I'm deep in fornication and I'm deep in sin and can't seem to break away from this addiction. Come and ask of him for the things that you want, the things that you desire. And along that way, ask him to work with you in the process that he will deliver you. Not so that you can be free from it, so that you can please man and look good in the sight of man. But that you would be able to break away from those things that stop you from standing before God with a pure heart. And realize that in the fullness of time, you will have the grace to, to do this work that you have been called to do. So I really hope that this video was a video of encouragement to somebody out there who is allowed uh, the enemy to accuse you and so your your hands are bound your feet are bound your soul is tied and you will miss your blessing because you have so decided that your your choices and, and your frailties disqualify you i want to encourage you today to step into grace thank you so much for watching love you lots take care of you